North South Connection, time for another installment of No So Countdown, top 40 WrestleMania performers of all time. JT and Aaron from No Holes Barred are here to kick off this installment with number 16. And when Ryan Gray, who's uh, organizing this whole thing, thank you to him, came to me and said, can you do Ultimate Warrior? I said, there's only one man I'll do it with. It's my teammate, Aaron George, who's a big Ultimate Warrior fan. Um, Mark. Right there. It's big Sid, yeah, big Mac, uh, Sid, Mac Sid Justice Sid. as well. And I made sure I wore, I wore the shirt of the one man who had the Warriors number, Papa Shango. Cursed mm. him. Nice. Cursed him, right? Nice. Uh, I've been queering all day, so. Okay, very good. Well, it didn't make the world go around, so I guess we're... No, but it, yeah. it didn't hurt either, so that's fine. Sadly, sadly. All right, so here's what we're going to do. I want to ask you one question to start this off, Aaron. Mm -hmm. Would you think Ultimate Warrior, WrestleMania, first thing in your mind? Is it this? Success. I can't, I can't point very well. Where is it? Where the is Ultimate it? Challenge? That, yeah. Uh, I, I, think, I think of the WrestleMania 7 match first. Yeah, yeah. Like, just because, you know, I, I think in terms of it, like, WrestleMania 7 match is not as big a match as Hogan and Warrior. Uh, WrestleMania 6 match is very underrated on these scores. But um, but uh, I think of that match. But when I think of the Warrior at WrestleMania, I think of him, my, my view of the Warrior in general is, like, he's a really great pay-per-view performer. Mm -hmm. And, you know, say what you want about him, the results are there. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think he's underrated historically. Um, you know, because for, whenever yeah, they made him go long, like because yeah. the knock on him is like, oh, I could just do this and that and then just close lines. But whenever they made him go long, it very rarely bad. And I feel like the story for a long time was like, oh, like Rude carried um, you know, Hogan, they wrote it out ahead of time. But like you watch the matches and it's like it, it he's the constant in all these matches. Like, you know, yeah. it wore it rude at SummerSlam 89, rude at five. You know, the Hogan match, both Savage matches. Like, he's got a plethora of big-time matches that connect um, with the crowd. And it, it's not him being carried, I'll say that. He's he's doing no. more than his part. And look, he, he has advantages. Like, there is the aura. There is the presentation. Yeah. Those those all help. But in the end, like, I, look, my when I turned the corner on the Warrior, because I was a smart, just like everybody else, right? When I turned the corner on the Warrior was when I was watching that uh, Self-Destruction Ultimate Warrior DVD. Mm -hmm. and Ted DiBiase and a couple other guys are like, oh, he's a terrible worker. And and I just I just kept coming back to the fact, well, then yeah. why does he have better matches with all the same guys you wrestled? Like, I mean, if you had to give me the pay-per-view catalog of either man to watch, I mean, you're taking Warrior over DiBiase. It's not close. <laughs> not even. And they wrestled all the same guys. Like, like yeah. DiBiase wrestled Savage. Did it even get to four stars ever? No. Like, yeah. You know, DiBiase wrestled Hogan a ton of times. Never like that. Um, you know, Jake. Jake yeah. has a... T he's another guy who's on the DVD. And I don't want to spend this time shitting on Jake. But, like, yeah. same attitude of, like, oh, he's terrible. Okay, but you fought Rick Rude to the right. worst match in WrestleMania history. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah and, and and what speaks to Warrior, we're going to go through his matches right now. Like, you know, Ryan and I are doing this countdown. We're ranking all 402 WrestleMania matches. You know, where we're re recorded, like we're inside the top, like Warrior has two inside the top 20. Like that, yeah, that tells you easy. where we're at, you know? So, all right. So we start you're talking. Not even giving, you're not even giving proper credit to the Hunter Hearst Helmsley squash, which should be five stars. Well, yes, but actually that, we'll that was there. a lot higher. I, I, we honored you. That was, that was a lot higher <laughs> than I think most would have had it on that list. So um, it was up there. Uh, so real quick, we, we take some grades from, from some luminaries here. We got Thunder Dave Meltzer. Uh, we got our buddy John Canton from the John Report, uh, who we thank uh, for leveraging this. And of course, you can you can check out his work; it's great. He's been around forever. And then uh, our friend Chad Campbell uh, for this installment uh, is in the rotation. All right, so we got the match in 1988, Hercules. Um, it's it's easy as worst match, it's, obviously. It's the one black eye of all. Yeah. I would say until when he comes. Like I think it's a different guy in '96. Not not a literal. Uh, is that guy. the third warrior or the second second warrior? <laughs> Technically the third, I guess. But okay. I find that when he comes back in 96, the match quality is not – it's not horrible, but it's yeah. not there. But this is the only one in that early stretch that I think – you know, and, and I'm looking at these scores. And I'm, like, if I'm giving 0.5 to something, it's one of the worst matches of all time. Right. And this Which is I think in Meltzer's like mind – I think the thing we can remember about Meltzer is he grazed these in the moment. 
Right, yeah. he never goes back and regrades. So in the moment, I can see thinking that this may have been the worst match he had ever seen. But um, how? Because you just if, if that's the case, you just sat sat through Jake Rude. Yeah. You I just know. sat through it. Like, and it's yeah. next. <laughs> They're both bad. Um, so I just looked when I did WrestleMania 4 on the Place to Be podcast, I had it at a half star. Um, so it's you know, it's I have it pretty that's pretty low for me, obviously. It's just really there's not much to it. It's just it's plotting. Um you know, and I like heel Hercules. Like I actually became a fan of him on doing place to be. Like I think as a heel, he does some good stuff. But for whatever reason, it just didn't click for them. Um, I thought the feud was good too, with that breaking the chain and all that. But it's just like, yeah, like it's crammed in this massive night of matches with all these. It's such a long show, and there's like, I don't know that that whole show is just odd. <laughs> the whole thing's odd. Um, yeah. for, I think I feel like if you put this match at SummerSlam in MSG, I bet it's like three at least three times better. Right. Yeah. I mean, look, to me, like, for it to go 0.5, it has to be business exposing. It has to be all time bad. For me, Hercules and Warrior, it's five, it's under five minutes. It's boring. But to me, that's like a two star match. And, but that's just my own way I look at it. Right. Because, mm -hmm. like, I don't, uh, they're in the fucking full Nelson forever. There's a yeah. lot of rest holes, but I, the action itself is fine. Like, yeah. Like, I, I mean, like, if you, for me, like, I, I always find this match such a relief because I've just sat through that yeah, like, and time Jake. limit draw where they just lay around for 15 minutes. Like, Well, the thing, too, is, like, it made no sense to not have Warrior just go over here. I think that hurts it, too. Like, yeah. Hercules is at the end of his rope as a heel anyway. Like, he's going to turn at the end of the year. Um, and you're pushing Warrior to the moon. Like, why isn't he just beating Hercules? Like, doing the double DQ is stupid. Um, or at least have have a win by DQ. Have Herc get desperate and whack him with the chain. Instead, well, like they wins. fight over it. No, it's he a wins. double, isn't it? No, he he he. Um, Herc gets him in the back suplex and he he lifts the. Oh, shoulder. that's right. Well, I think it was a double DQ. All right, yeah. well, it's a weak win. Sorry, you can explain for that. Warrior. Yeah, it's a weak yeah. win. Anyway, let's move on. This is worst match. Only four minutes. Sure. Uh, all right, WrestleMania five. I think it's the overlooked Warrior Rude match, um, but yes, and I think it's firmly the second best. I mean, SummerSlam '89 is yeah. clearly the best. That's an epic, and SummerSlam yeah. '90s kind of like whatever. Um, Saturday's mid event isn't bad, um, but I think this one is is really good, uh, and it, it comes at a time where Rude really needed a really good match. Like if you kind of watch the trajectory of his in ring career in WF, he kind of needed it, uh, yeah. and I think this was his step up to the next level at this match. It felt like he was like a lower, maybe mid mid card guy, and this brought him up a, a tier. Um, yeah. Warrior putting him over, and the moment of Bobby getting putting his first him over, <laughs> I know, right? The the moment of, of Bobby getting his first championship and Jesse losing it, how happy he is for Bobby and Bobby, Bobby helping Rude win. Him. Yeah, it's it's a uh, yeah, and the Warrior kicks the shit out of him. But it, this is like a really really good match. Uh, Meltzer oh, and Canton, are, I think a little bit low, but Chad, I think Chad's about right. I, I think I would have it right around there. I I can look back, but mine's usually about three and a half for this one. But I, I am always like, oh, this is really good. Like that's always always been my view of the match. It's solid. It's fun. And, yeah, I'm at three uh, and a half. Yeah, that's where I'm at. So we're not far from Chad. I'm actually surprised he's uh, higher than me on it. But um, yeah, that makes sense to me. I I I love it. All right, we know you love the next one, um, Ultimate Challenge. It's you know my favorite pay per view still of all time. Yeah, Hogan Warrior. Uh, when we talked when we started this, we said, "What do you think of when you think of Warrior?" I think underrated, but I also think of the constellations, you know, it was written in the stars or the Frank Vince says. Yeah. Um, I think of that. I, I, that's honestly the first thing that comes to mind when I think of Warrior at WrestleMania. And just that iconic him in the orange tights. Uh, With the paint you know, on his chest for the first yeah, time. Yeah, just like the wide shot of the Sky Dome, but you see them up on the screen. Um, that's mm. really cool. The hug. I mean, it's an epic you know, match. Underrated bit is at the beginning when Hogan's entering the ring and Warriors on the second turnbuckle and they got that wide shot of that. Yeah, and yeah, he's, he's staring point, down at him. Doing this and Hogan's pointing. Like, it's like, yeah. oh my God, like how it couldn't be more excited for these two to collide. I know, let's go. Um, it's a great match, even though Hogan loses his knee halfway through, right? His knee's gone. They don't know where it, where it went, Gorilla says. Right. Um, my knee, but, my knee, brother. But yeah, I, I mean, I know you you have it at a, at a hard five, right? You're, you're all the full Monty on this one. How is it not perfect? Like, I mean, like it, it, with, with what they do with the excitement, it's, it's my same, look, it's my same argument for Hogan Andre yeah. only this, I think is a, this is a more, I think it's a better technical match. Yeah. I'd have Hogan Andre ranked higher, but I think this is a better technical match, which is insane considering who we're talking about. But, um, 
But I just love the action. I love how it builds to the crescendo. I love too that like I think legit like there's legit ambiguity as to who's gonna win. Yeah. Like I think there's a fun thread of like Battle of the Gods or WrestleMania that starts at Hogan mm-hmm. Andre, then you go to Hogan Warrior, then Hogan Rock, then Rock Cena. You know what I mean? Like it, it feels like a nice like those mm-hmm. four is like a bookended story, right? It's kind of like a Hogan, then Warrior pops in. Hogan's still there, fights the Rock, then Rock kind of takes the torch and fights Cena. And that feels like another battle of the gods. So it's, I don't know, it's just kind of a cool, like, little, I always look at those four matches in my mind as, like, almost like this yeah. long form 28 year or 25 year story of, like, you know, the, the, the gods of WWE going to war at WrestleMania. Well, and when at, at WrestleMania 41, when Rock fights Reigns. Yes, we'll be gonna, there. It's going to be the continuation of that. <laughs> Yeah, because there's barely been none. Can you think of one since 28? I mean, I, I would say in theory it should have been Reigns and Brock. Uh, they just never deliver on it. Um, but uh, it brought, Reigns was not there. Yeah. If they had never fought before, Brock Undertaker. Right. right. But they had, so yeah. that's kind of moot. No, I can't think of Reigns, another one since then. No, I don't think there's been one. Because um, there's not gods anymore. Right, right? exactly. That's why I mean, Brock I mean, was Brock probably the closest. Is, yeah, but even, he, but I'm, I, I wonder because Brock, because of his character, it's almost like it doesn't lend itself to being a god, right? Like, like Hogan is a god. He's not a technical marvel, but he's invincible, right? right? Warrior yeah. talks to the literal gods. Uh, Cena, nothing affects him. Rock is kind of like that. Brock is more reality based, which is strange. well, and it's funny because I feel like Rock evolves to that, like because when it's Rock Austin, it doesn't feel that way to me. No, but at 18, but it's almost like Hogan brings it out of him. Like almost yeah. like gets a, elevates him up to that level to bring him up. And then he goes on to Hollywood and becomes a star and he jacks up. And then when he fights Cena, you know, he's the rock Monster. we know, right? Yeah, all jacked up. So how insane uh, is it that like Hogan's star power is so big that he's able to pull the rock up in 2002? Yeah. I mean, and it's it's not a surprise that three of these matches we're talking about are, you know, Hogan, Hogan involved. Yeah. So and Cena, who's the kind of becomes the modern day Hogan in a way, right? So yeah, if, if it's um all right, WrestleMania seven, we all know. I don't think we need to spend a ton of time on it. Macho Man versus Ultimate Warrior. Um, you know, we're not there on the countdown yet. Ryan and I count down all the matches, but you know where it's gonna be. It's gonna be inside the top five. I, I won't spoil it. Top three. I, I I'd be shocked if it wasn't top well, three. Well, where do you have it? Where do you have it? Um, I don't want to spoil Wrestlema- just WrestleMania. WrestleMania matches. Where do you have it? Two. I think. I think on my GWE, I think I had it two all time. Yeah, I the only well. on my GWE, I finished with uh Cena Punk from Money in the Bank at one. Yeah, but I think if that wasn't there, it would have been my number two also. Right. So I'm not mistaken. I have. It, that well, if I do them my manias, it would be Brett Austin number one, then this, then Hogan Andre. I think. Yeah. Would be and my then mania. take or Sean somewhere in there. Or are you lower on that? Yeah, the first one, but as a mania, yeah. But I, they, they're, that's not my favorite of their matches. I like the Hell in the Cell right. the best, but yeah. Um, but this this I, WrestleMania seven match, I mean, it, yeah, it's like this has been talked at uh, at length in every one of our podcasts we've ever done. It's the drama, the action, the characters. It's like. Everything that's great about wrestling converging into like 21 minutes of action. And then the post-match, it's like it knocks it into the stratosphere of like great. Yeah, I, I mean it's it's iconic. It's it's perfectly done. It's a wonderful story. And it would to your point, the post-match closes a five-year arc of Savage as well, like yeah. inside of it, you know. So not only do you get the end of the feud, you also get Savage's first act of his career comes to a close. By reuniting with Elizabeth, um, you know, on that stage. And Savage to me is like, you know, we'll see where he ends up on this list, but just such a, his whole career is again also maps to mania. You know, it's like he debuts at two, he's abusive to Liz. At three, you know, he's like, Steel kind of gets his revenge, right? He had abused Steamboat, you know, treated Liz like shit. Mm-hmm. So, so Steel steps up. Four, he's turned to Leaf, you know, he's showing Liz respect. Reaches the pinnacle. Five, he's turned jealous again. Loses Liz. Six, he gets embarrassed, you know, by Dusty, and, and Liz is there to laugh at him. And then seven comes back together. And then eight ends up, you know, him and because of Liz, he's pulled back. Yeah, 
Right, him and Flair, right? So it's like, you know, and then 10 is like a epilogue. But but sure. his two through eight is like, it's such a perfect story. His well, mania and, year and, to year. And look, I know we're not talking about Savage here, yeah. but the idea that like, there's a moment in that post-match where he finally holds the ropes for Elizabeth. Yes. Like, I mean, it's just that little detail of like, oh, yeah. that's how the relationship has changed. Yeah, you know? it was cool. All right, uh, you mentioned it at 12. Warrior destroys uh, Triple H. My favorite. <laughs> uh, it's an awesome squash. Uh, everyone always says, oh, this is the punishment for the curtain call, but it actually happened two months after this. It hasn't happened um, yet. Yeah. But I, I, I think it's one of those things, and I, I had the same argument when Sheamus destroyed Daniel Bryan at WrestleMania 28. Sometimes it is this type of thing that is like more beneficial than like if you have like a six minute match with Warrior where you get a little bit of offense. Like this well, is way more memorable. It, yeah. This is like way more iconic that he did that, that he got killed by Warrior than if he had a boring like five minute match where he's like, and I've seen all of Hunter Assembly's 96 and early 97 on Wrestling Warzone. It's nothing to shake a stick at. So I, I think doing this was like <laughs> the best perfect. match of the year. Yeah, and the Look, hype is great. This, this will finish if I were to rank all of Triple H's matches. I feel like it finished right in the middle. <laughs> yeah. Like it wouldn't be at the bottom. There's no way. Like, no. Um, you know, what the, my, one of my favorite uh, underrated part of this match that I love is that they, it's the only time I've ever heard Triple H's music get a pop. <laughs> yeah. Cause they knew it's Warrior not for him. It's like, yeah. Oh yes. There <laughs> we go. I mean, they had Bill warrior for two months. I mean, it was January, early January when they said, you know, what about the return of the ultimate warrior? And they kept teasing it and they had the Lawler, you know, he's uh, 400 yeah. pounds and bald or whatever. And then he comes out still looking jacked. Um, there's one other thing oh. I want to mention for his WrestleMania resume, WrestleMania 30. So he comes, he comes oh. out for the hall of fame. The next night he does the promo and then dies. Like, I think, I mean, it, it's, <laughs> I, I still can't wrap my head around it. Like, like I cannot, I still can't all these years later, almost 10 years, 10 years later, I cannot sit here. It's like, to me, it's a bigger mystery than like creation, the Big Bang Theory, like Ultimate <laughs> Warrior. The Earth. Ultimate Warrior returning to WWE after like 18 years away of hate, hey. finally re signing, going to the Hall of Fame, giving a speech about dying. Speech. Yeah. Yeah. And then dies like 24 hours later. <laughs> like that tweet from, from Triple H, like, is burned. I know where I was when I read it. I was like, what the fuck? It was after Raw. And it was like, or it was the next night after, um, yeah. And it, whatever was on NXT or SmackDown at that point. I think maybe SmackDown was on Tuesday, whatever it was. And it was like, you know, rest in peace, Ultimate Warrior, one of the greats. And I'm like, wait, wait, is this a oh, word? Like, this is, this what? can't be real. Someone what? Hacked he was glitch. just, he was just on, he was just on TV. And like, it, it's like his whole character is this weird warrior from another dimension, right? So, yeah. like, what, doesn't it make sense that he would make peace and then. Go home. Fucking leave. Yeah, it was. It's so. I think it adds to the mis mystique and legacy of his WrestleMania output. I mean, I, um, I love anyway. it. All right. So if you could add it, is there anything he could have added to like move them up this list? Where would you, if, if you're solo ranking this list, where do you have him? Um, well, look, I haven't taken the time to solo rank. Who's right. one spot ahead of him? Uh, coming up next is another guy you love, and that's uh, Andre the Giant. I'd have, I'd have Warrior ahead of Andre, almost certainly. Um, and after him, I don't want to uh, in also, this installment is Kurt Angle. That would be a conversation. It, see, the thing with Angle is it's 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 it, it's hard to compare these guys because yeah. Angle's the in ring guy, Warrior's the, the the crazy character. But for me, I think Warrior's a lot more memorable at WrestleMania than Kurt Angle. Mm. Like when I think of WrestleMania, I'll think of Warrior, Savage, Hogan, Rock, uh, Brock, Reigns, because Reigns main evented so many. I won't think of Angle. I'll be like, where was, oh yeah, the Michaels match. You know, like that's, that's yeah, my yeah, you gotta think view. about it for a sec. That's it. Whereas him, he comes to mind right away, but I do get that he's kind of hurt by the right. lack of a greater resume. Yeah. And I think when Ryan asked me like some of this, I, I, I found myself defending Andre a lot in our discussions and I was like, you know, he's a lot, like he's got a lot more to it than you would think. And, and, you know, we'll pass this off mm -hmm. in a minute to have him be covered, but like you start to think about his moments as like stud, um, the WrestleMania two battle Royal WrestleMania three his involvement in the main event at four colossal connection moment is awesome. So like, he's really got yeah. a lot of great stuff as well. It's more moment based, but they're big moments. Here's what I think. 
and, and, and you know, they'll, they'll take it from there. But it feels like when you compare their moments, they're yeah. all the same. Yeah. Like, it, it feels like the same level. Like, if you're going to kind of, okay, this moment is worth this many points, this one. I feel like they'd level out at moments, but then Warrior has the better matches. Yeah. So, which is, again, I would never expect to have been saying that, right. but... And one That's spot apart. I mean, you're me. basically they're basically the same. I mean, when you look at where they are on the list, still well when within the top to, twenty of all time. Yeah, because I mean, how many guys have been in WrestleMania matches? Five hundred. Right. Yeah, right. You know, so if, if you're hitting 15, 16, you're you're splitting hairs. Yeah. All right. Uh, any, I, I think the Hercules, I guess, maybe brought him down a little bit. Like if he maybe has, if you drop that off, you give one more, maybe that pushes him a little bit. But I don't, I don't know if it would have mattered because when you look at the guys ahead of him, it's like again the moments. Or epic, like multiple classic matches, right? So, yeah. Um, no. All right. All right. Well, yeah. I guess this, this was a lot of fun talking to Warrior with you, of yeah, course. I like it. I said, Warrior's I the dialed you up as soon as he was on, on the list for me. Uh, so stay tuned. We just we name dropped the next two guys. We saw it in the write-up anyway. Uh, so yeah. stay tuned. Yeah. We're going to hand this off to Andre. Check out everything in North South Connection. We appreciate all the support. Aaron and I here every Saturday. We're doing uh, – make sure you check out uh, – we just did our Ultimate WrestleMania card – building the all-time mania card it was, it was a lot of fun so check it was that so out. much fun yeah, so much great. fun i can't, so I can't believe how quickly we got it done it was amazing so check that out check out everything we love you goodbye goodbye all right north south connection we are back in the next installment of the greatest superstars in the history of wrestlemania I am the Down Under Thunder Dave Hall. I am joined by Rocco Martone. And Rocco, I'm excited because we're talking about here at the number 15 spot, the one, the only, Andre the Giant. Andre hey. coming in at 15, Rocco. What, what, are your, what are your initial thoughts there? I mean, that's a little low if you ask me, but there's few things I like more than wrestling and then talking Andre the Giant, and there's few things I like better than Andre the Giant. It's called the Showcase of the Immortals, and there's he is the immortal, right? He is the true god of wrestling, if you ask me. So 15 is a little low ski for me. I've got to agree with you there, and I think as we start to talk a little bit about about where where his standing is at each of the manias he was a part of, you know, Andre is... He he really like you said he's the immortal one he he's the legend that that I think a lot of the rock and roll wrestling era was built on Hogan was the superstar Hogan was the hero but Andre was the foundation Andre was the pillar I think that upheld the company back then and and this is going to be I think this is going to be the biggest one of the of the series I think yeah you know, we we got to say this is going to be the biggest episode of this series because of uh because of just how good Andre is but like you said he he's I, I think he's vastly underrated as as for his contributions to these this WrestleMania situation maybe not so much in his in-ring performance but i don't think that's what andre's about that's not why we are talking about andre the giant today i mean i think he has memorable moments in at least five to in almost every one there's a thing that he does that is memorable that you could put on a highlight reel if you ask me and like you said hogan and him like there's two like the people often say the hogan and andre when they fight at three they're two gods but andre's the god hogan's the hercules andre's the zeus mm -hmm. hogan's the mortal or with mortal blood so yeah, uh, in ring, it's going to be hard to get me to say anything negative about Andre the Giant. I will be <laughs> tonight, but <laughs> it, I think I'm not doing that because I'm I'm biased. I I I think I'm right. <laughs> I think he's the best. Now, I, I think I think as we talk about this, I think if people have an open mind and are genuinely uh, being objective, I, I think what we're going to see and what we're going to talk about, I think people will be. Um, I don't think people will be surprised if they're objective when we talk about actually how good Andre really was. Because I, I was saying before we started recording, I was saying to you, Rocco, I truly believe, like, everyone talks about WrestleMania. WrestleMania was built on Hulk Hogan. That was the concept that WrestleMania was built on. But you've sort of, to me, WrestleMania was built on three matches. The first WrestleMania, Hogan T is is your, your your match. That was your mainstream publicity. That was Mr T coming in. That that's that was attracting the worldwide audience. Then you had 
Wendy Richter and Leilani Kai. That was the Cindy Lauper influence. Again, bringing in the mainstream group. But from the hardcore fans' perspective, I think they were looking forward to the Andre the Giant Big John Stud match at WrestleMania 1. I mean, that... That was really that was the wrestling foundation of this card. It had it had a solid backstory. It had genuine history behind it and genuine hatred sitting in there. Yeah, I mean, and what's more wrestling? And you're talking about this is wrestling, and WrestleMania one is wrestling. There's a a celebrity involvement. There's a women's match. There's a body slam challenge between two giants, and there's nothing more wrestling to me than two giants having a a, a mm. weird stipulation match. So. I do agree, and I think that that is the I, – I think that's the second best match on the card. I think it's the, the second biggest moment of the card. Andre, the, with the bag of money, is uh, – do. are we going to go through each match? Or are we, wanna, are we yeah, gonna I, I think we can quickly touch base on each match here because I, I agree. Like, it, it, it's interesting because when you look and you can see on the screen there, those of you that, that, that are actually watching and not just, just listening in, in the background – um, you can see, look, Dave Meltzer didn't really think much of this and Canton did, doesn't think much of this. And and JT, look, 1.5, but, you know, stars, th this isn't, as we said before, this isn't star quality. This is about the spectacle. This is about the story. And and one of the forgotten things, it was the body slam challenge, but one of the forgotten elements that doesn't really even get picked up by the commentary team during the match is that Stud and Ken Patera only a couple of months earlier had been behind the cutting of Andre's hair. So Andre's coming in with, with real aggression. And that match, Andre just toys with Stud. I mean, oh, he yeah. just he just plays with him. He's just waiting for the moment. It really established that Andre was the dominant giant. And and it's a career. It it says body slam challenge. People forget it's Andre's career was on the line in this match, mm -hmm. too. So he was that strident in his beliefs that he said, I could slam this dude. The money he says, even at the end promo, which is great, he's like, that didn't mean anything. Immediate, it means that he, he was so gregarious when he won that he just threw the money to the crowd instantly. There was not a thought in his mind of keeping it, but he was fighting for his career. But like, there's things Andre does where, like, yeah, if you're a Wimwork truther, you might not like love the way this match is set up or any Andre match, but Andre throws a leg kick in this match, mm. which is the most brutal thing in the world if you really think what an Andre the Giant leg kick match in a match is. So to me, that move alone justifies watching this match and waiting for it. And the viciousness and, vero and vol ferocity of Andre's chops to stud in the beginning of this match are violent. And this match is violent. It might not mm. be the most linearly co coherent match if you're looking for the, the standard three stars, whatever. But it's brutal. It's violent. It's for Andre's career. And he shows up as the gregarious giant in the beginning. He's smiling as he walks his way, the way down the ring. It just shows his character as a character, mm. I think. Absolutely. Absolutely. The gentle giant outside the ring, but once you've got him in the ring and you've got him angry, it really came out. And this, this match epitomized it. And you actually, there are elements, there are moments in the match where you, you can see Stud is really, he's questioning why he's, he's like, I'm not sure I want to be in here. He was doing everything that Andre wanted in that match. He, he, wasn't, he wasn't going anywhere, but up and down at the end. He's fighting for his life in more ways than one, I think, in this one. So there, you know, th there it is, the start. I mean, Andre, really, like we said, found one of the foundational elements of the first WrestleMania. We jump forward 12 months and Andre finds himself maybe not so much in a key storyline anymore, but he's a focal part of the event because they're doing the the Battle Royal in Chicago and and it's certainly advertised there there are basically I think two key elements to this battle royal you've got the football players and specifically william the refrigerator perry uh building on the the success of the chicago bears in 85 and then you've got andre and that's that's pointed out by the fact that andre he comes into the ring last he gets the final introduction everyone else is sort of like and here comes sd jones and here comes king tonga and here comes even Bruno Sammartino sort of felt like an afterthought in this battle royal. But Andre is given the last entrance, the moment. Everyone waits for him. He enters the ring, and, and there's the draw card. It's Andre in a battle royal. And even the build-up on um, 
on championship wrestling if you if you watched uh the build up if you watched that that sort of time period of 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 wwe television it really was built up is andre is unbeaten in battle royals can anyone stop him the king of the battle royal i mean he's been he was called that since i started watching wrestling years before this and he proves it in this match and like you said yeah he's the linchpin to this he's holding it together and in story one coherency him and stud go at it immediately in this match mm. right for it him mixes up with stud immediately and it's great <laughs> it's not andre related but yeah Br the, watching bruno in this match is kind of a bummer but uh that's just besides the point but yeah like andre is just a force in this match and he he's he's at the end he's with the two up and coming the heart foundation the elimination of bret hart is something that you we're not seeing guys being thrown over the top rope mm. like that in in wrestling in 1986 you know like it was it was a moment and him and, and Perry like are these forces that are kind of built up and like, they don't necessarily like interact too much. I wonder if they were saving that for something. Maybe if Perry was willing to, to do something probably more with stud, but like, I think it's the greatest battle Royal in WrestleMania history by far. I think, uh, mm. I, 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 that's just my opinion. And it's Andre who's makes it that way. Like there's just, uh, it just, his, his image in a battle Royal is what, wrestling's about to me you know this giant amongst the giants and he really seems giant against football players and wrestlers he still is a fucking giant and and absolutely and you know part of the epitome is very early on in the match there there's that moment where there are multiple guys trying to get him out and he just he, he just bounces them around just just tosses them aside and it, it is a sensational in that moment and that that end moment that end sequence i mean he I think you've got to give Andre some credit there as well because he he moved he he took you know not bumps in the traditional sense where he's going down onto his back and taking slams or anything, but he let the Heart Foundation double team him for a couple of minutes. He made them look good. He he sort of set them apart as hey these two guys are dangerous, and then in the end it's just but it's Andre. It, it's easy. It, it's 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 an easy win. He he does it. I'm actually impressed that Dave Meltzer gave this match four stars. Yeah, that, 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 that blew my I, I, mind when I saw. That. We say that jokingly because of 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 we know his opinion of Andre and Stud and a lot of guys in that Rumble in that Battle Royal. But I think, like you said, it is. I think it is the the greatest Battle Royal they've ever done. It is well booked, well put together, and Andre stands tall. Great moment. There's three, at least three former WWF world champions in it. There's the foot, like there's, I love the moment where he takes stud and Perry's head, the two biggest like threats to him and he clocks their heads together, which is just a great little piece of just Andre. Like mm. he doesn't, he doesn't hide from his threats. He goes at the threats. Like he's not yeah. on defense in this, in this part. That's the best way to put it. He's not on defense in the battle Royal. Like he's on offense, which is admirable in a battle Royal to take that stance of not just waiting mm. for people to come to you. You're fighting them off. That's yeah. it. And and we talk about his his standing again. We come back to this standing. At this point, he's still he is after Hogan as the champion, he is still this idol, this this epitome, this pillar. It's like he stands apart from Hogan. They had to put 20 guys or 19 other guys against him to try and get a victory. Really, when you look at the WrestleMania 2 roster, there is no other option. They could. There's nothing else they could have done with Andre in at WrestleMania two, but do a battle royal because of just how larger than life he was. And I think that then leads into what happens at WrestleMania three because they really look at this standing. You've got Andre is just such. He's just such an image, such an icon in the business at this point that really it became the only option they had available to them. If they want to draw, if they want to make something big, it really was, we need to do this Hogan-Andre thing. It fits into Andre. It fits into the storyline of Andre, who is being overlooked. He beat 20 guys at the, the, the WrestleMania 2. Like, he killed... He, he took Big John Studd down in WrestleMania 1, and, like, where's his title shot? Like, and when you get to 3, there's really no other option for him to go he needs to like and he was right like where was his title opportunities after destroying 19 other men at wrestlemania too so it's the perfect way and like the perfect like and this is like an interesting arc too where it's like once bobby comes and like andre turns to the dark side and like we'll, we'll see how that works out for him uh with his obsession with hogan now and 
with Bobby kind of steering him and Bobby using him as a weapon for Bobby's own needs too. So, and then we go to WrestleMania three. So uh, I don't know. WrestleMania three, negative four, huh? What do you think about that? Dave? <laughs> oh, Mel, Mel, this is where we come back to the, the fans or the, the people who analyze wrestling, who want to see in ring action. I want to see arm drag takedowns and drop kicks and, and and the and and all these sort of quick moves and you know multiple near falls and stuff like that that like we got with Savage and Steamboat, absolutely outstanding in ring quality match. But the storyline of this Hogan Andre match is just it's out of this world from an in ring move perspective. It might not have it. It doesn't need to have it because this was a this was. For Gorilla, this was the epitome of the immovable force and the, the irresistible force and the immovable object. Honestly, that's what this is. It's it's the like you said, two icons, two giants coming together, two gods coming together. That they are going to be battling. They are not going to be competing. It's not a wrestling match. It is honestly, can Hogan withstand it and chop down the giant? And he did. It's a good match. It's a great match. It's it's got the crowd absolutely engaged from the moment Andre makes his way to the ring with that amazing, just cold stare that he holds from the beginning. As Hogan comes down, just glaring at him, he just played that character so well, and it draws you in, and you want you want Hogan to chop him down. But from the moment the match starts, you're sitting there. You honestly, if you're a true wrestling fan watching this for the first time, you honestly thought Andre could win the is going to win the title here. He really could end the superhero status of Hogan. I mean, like you said, Andre playing the Andre is the to me he's the greatest wrestling actor in a wrestling environment. His facial expressions are so incredible at telling his story. He went from this, like we were saying, this smiling giant two two years ago to this man who is. The, the 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 anger and the resentment and the the frustration is so played up so well when he looks at Hogan and when he sees him and I think when people talk about moves and all this stuff it's like how would a giant move a giant does not move fast historically he's called a giant for a reason Mytho- mythologically historically he's a giant he's going to move slow but his arms coming down slowly on you are more the impact it's going to leave is more than a punch from a normal man one punch from Andre's twenty from a normal guy and. Mm. Andre trying to pile drive Hogan on the concrete was the craziest thing I had ever seen in my entire life up until that moment. Can you imagine if that had happened? Like it would be insane. Like I've said before, like the earth would crack, magma would flow out of the ground. It's <laughs> it's so impressive of a moment. And just to leave that little bit of Andre kind of had a three count on him. Like, you know, they they play mm. that up so well. It's part of the story. I think it's the greatest match of all time. I don't I don't have caveats. I don't have asterisks on it. To me, it's just a masterwork of how you would tell a story with these characters in the ring. And that story, that story arc carries 12 entire months to WrestleMania 4. I mean, it is, it is the back, that match becomes the backstory then to the, the main event match. And then that leads into our WrestleMania 4 match, which it, it is the draw card of WrestleMania 4. The tournament was there. The tournament was there to crown a new champion, but the draw card match was still Hogan Andre. 12 months after they first competed, it's still the draw. Andre, I think you just sort of talked about the anger he showed towards Hogan. I think it's even taken up an, a notch further it, at WrestleMania 4. Yeah, I mean, I said right before we talked, like, this is it's a five minute sprint involving Hulk Hogan and Andre the Giant. What the epicness and the, uh, the punishing, like uh, the monoliths uh, colliding glaciers colliding, maybe at, at three, this was a five minute sprint. Hogan literally sprints to the ring immediately. The anger of Hogan, Andre cuts him off and they just beat the shit out of each other for five minutes. And I don't know if there's ever been a chair shot to the head at WrestleMania before, but there are, they trade them in this one. Hogan with mm. a flying running, uh, like a, a, New Jack style double handed uh, right to Andre's head at the end. It's just such a uh, high impact, high intensity match that doesn't stop ever. Um, also, Andre is at DiBiase's uh, in DiBiase's corner earlier in the night, mm-hmm. so his impact on four is more than just this match. He's there. He he gets DiBiase into 
the next rounds with by cheating and taking out Duggan. Mm-hmm. So if you're going to really say like his actual WrestleMania performance, it's not just this match, it's that. And then in the overarching story, it does lead to the idea of him possibly being used as a pawn by DiBiase mm-hmm. and maybe even Heenan on the slide too. So there's so many facets that come into play in this, what could be for some people a throwaway five minute match. But to me, the intensity and the violence, this is a very violent match the chops andre throws are violent the chair shots are violent and that's mm. that's what i want to see in a wrestling match of uh, with the, with hatred of this level between two men before we talk about the last two we, we've talked about four wrestlemanias and honestly we've been talking about andre pretty well in the same class and category and stratosphere as hogan they are they are the two guys set apart at the first four manias it's their it's theirs. You can say, you might say Hogan sits at the one spot all time after four manias because of the wins, but Andre is 1A in terms of status and, and, and presentation and who he is at these four manias. And, and, and this is why we're, we're, we're saying like 15 is, it, it seems low for a guy who without Andre, you could argue the first four WrestleManias do not happen or do not achieve the success that they would have. Like like the like Hogan at WrestleMania is, is almost like a proof of concept, right? Of who Hogan is. But they knew Andre was there. Like mm. you could you could try this Hulk Hogan character, which is was still new. Like he only won the belt. Like, you know, like and you have you're you're propping him up with a celebrity with Roddy Piper, with Cindy Lauper, with that. Like mm. he has all this stuff, and Andre is just Andre the Giant in tights and boots, and they know. The, no matter what, if the Hogan match is a flop, if Mr. T is a flop, he is Andre the Giant. So like you're saying, yes, like Andre is just as much propping up the first four years of this WrestleMania concept as Hogan is. But his is more load bearing because he yeah. they knew he would be able to do it, you know. Then, then, then we get WrestleMania 5. It, 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 it feels like this this anomaly in the situation it, it it really is maybe the fourth or fifth match from the top at, in terms of its standing at the card andre has had a significant drop down in his presentation as the heel he's no longer the number one heel he's no longer he's obviously probably main eventing house shows uh often the b or even c show so he's not really being presented at as that top level draw anymore which is which is sad Probably a reflection, though, and one of the things we haven't mentioned here is you're talking about Andre's presented as the wrestler, as the star, and 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 Hogan still creating and developing his character. Part of that is because Andre is at the back end of his career. He'd been wrestling since the early 70s. He'd been a top attraction and a top star since the mid 1970s around the world. This is this is the top player, and if we look at the world today, I mean. It's like the Undertaker in the last three or four years of a streak. We know that he was at the back end of his career. We know that he struggled in ring, but you wanted to see him. People wanted to see Andre, and that that was the thing. And and I think people still wanted to see Andre when it came to WrestleMania Five and Jake and 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 credit Andre allowed himself to play into a character or a character role of. Being deathly afraid of the snake, he played into it and he allowed it to tell a compelling story. That all you wanted to see at WrestleMania Five was Jake get the snake out and get it on Andre. Yeah, and Andre is once again uh, such a great facial actor in terms of how he is. He he knows Jake is lesser than him, but the snake is the thing that he just he's just over it. I mean, he literally almost died from a <laughs> from the snake. <laughs> like, he had a heart attack. Like it's not like he's uh, just it's not just a phobia. Like this thing almost mm. did fucking kill him. So yeah, it, it is. It's funny because it's such a like Jake just Jake just gets his ass kicked in this match, and it's a weird personal thing, and it kind of shows like the spiral of Andre. And I guess a lot of it is like his physical appearance is degrading because he's getting like we all know what Andre's health situation was like. But if you really kind of look at it as just a character and take away like the person, it does look like a man just mentally unraveling. Where this obsession with Hogan, this being forced by Bobby to go for the belt, and kind of almost taking Bobby's ambitions and like look what Bobby's guys are doing on this mania. Well, like rude is going for a belt and like other, like, and, and Andre's just in this feud over like with a personal feud. So it's like, he's not as acute in what his focus is anymore. Like, he's just like, now this, I'm going to fight Jake the snake. And he was so driven with Hogan and the belt that now it just seems like 
he's unraveling, right? And he looks like he's unraveling. And in the greater story, I think you could look at it that way. And uh, in other ways, it just seems like they didn't know what to do with him. <laughs> for this, yeah. I mean. Well, it's interesting you use the term the greater story because as we come sort of to the end of Andre's time at Mania, WrestleMania 6, I have always felt, and I hold true that, I mean, WrestleMania 6 is the redemption of Andre the Giant. It is, it is the redemption. But I think it plays into a... WrestleMania is the story. WrestleMania 1 to 6, you've got this WrestleMania story of Andre. As we said, WrestleMania 1, he is the pillar of the company. The giant battling someone who, who has taken his dignity, claims he's a bigger giant than he is, he brings him down to size. WrestleMania 2, 20 guys have got to try and take him down. Then we get to 3, and we have the change. We have... What I like to see, and it was raised at WrestleMania 3 in commentary, the poisoning of the mind. It's like the feeling that Bobby poisoned his mind. And you've just shared that WrestleMania 4, he got worse. WrestleMania 5, he's just sort of doing what Bobby wants. It's not really a thing. Then we come to 6 and the end. And, and I'm going I'm to say, I said it. Uh, I was did the demolition uh, ranking right at the very beginning of this journey. And I said it then. This match is basically... The second most important match on the card after the main event of Hogan Warrior. That's where Andre's back in that importance bit. It's in tag teams, but he's there. But the end of this match, Bobby slapping Andre in the face, it's almost like it, it awakens him. It, it, it drives the poison out of his body. Andre is redeemed. He, he tosses Haku and, and Bobby aside, and he stands tall to a massive massive ovation the fans wanted to love him again and i know they always hoped that he would get another match at wrestlemania 7 that was the the, the desire that andre would have a last run as a baby face and he never got it because of his health but that redemptive moment at wrestlemania 6 brings us this whole story to a beautiful conclusion yeah and you're right in terms of like this match is amazing first off it's just four, like three dudes Andre maybe with the greatest um, never tagged in guy. Like, and people may sometimes say mm -hmm. that as a pejorative, but he does so much on the outside of the ring, more so than I've seen hot tags of dudes do inside the ring. Mm -hmm. He's outside. He's his facial expressions once again watching Haku first, and he he breaks up. He's he's active as fuck. He breaks up pins. He's he's manipulating dudes. He gets that he gets Haku throws him into his head. He gets Andre mm -hmm. the crucif uh, crucif Andre move is in there mm -hmm. as and that's such a move of like. This guy is crucified watching his friend take the finishers from demolition helpless. And that Andre helpless, he's able to be a giant who's able to make himself helpless with this crucified move, which is a great thing that he he's, does. And he's such an expert at doing stuff when he's watching on the outside and cheering on Haku. Him choking um, Axe in the corner is a major moment in the match where he's on the outside and he's just choking Axe, debilitating him, taking that kick from Haku. And like you're saying, it was almost like he had a like a Faustian bargain with Bobby Heenan and Bobby like got into his brain and tempted him into this idea. And that slap woke him out of like his slumber and he just realized what was happening. It's like a myth mythic thing where he realized it and fans were so eager to give him the love that it was instant. It was perfect. Him headbutting Haku out of the thing and tossing Bobby out of the <laughs> cart. Like how much of a better, send off can this dude have like smiling like, once again like you're saying it's almost like the or it's like a circle he entered wrestlemania one the smiling giant and he leaves six the smiling giant he lost the belly he lost the match but he redeemed he, he found his soul he redeemed his character yes. you know mm. like and that's bigger than winning a match and that's bigger than yeah. star ratings and what happens or whatever you want to say that is storytelling of um it's not even storytelling because sometimes they fall into storytelling but yeah. it's his character and who he is and not a lot of guys could get that reaction, and he can because he's he is who he is, and it's such a great. Yeah. And let's not forget, he was at WrestleMania Seven as the good guy. He helps Big mm. Boss Man, and he almost kind of is passing the torch to Big Boss Man in a way. It seems like he's almost saying like, "You deserve to be the champ." He helps Big Boss Man. Mm. Uh, it's a it's Mr. Perfect with the belt. This is yeah. uh, Boss Man doesn't win, but like it's almost like his. He didn't go out on his back, but he went out saying, "Boss man, you're the guy. Like you, uh, you mm. get my 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 accolades." So he is there at seven too. So like, mm. that's another little piece of his uh, WrestleMania puzzle. But yeah, yeah 
I, I love this match too. The yeah. a two and a one is insane for this match. Three, and, and 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 so we come back. You know, at the end of six, Andre is still receiving the recognition of a guy who is one of the top guys in the company. So for six straight manias, Andre is either seen on a level to the world champion Hulk Hogan or only just below him. Six manias in a row. This guy is in major matches, major events, and everyone wants to see these matches. So you talk about where a guy stands in history. There are not many guys who you could sit there and say, apart from Hulk Hogan for the first six manias, there is no one else that you could argue epitomized the, 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 these, uh, these events were built around uh, more than Andre. And when we, when we look back now and we see him sitting at a number 15 ranking, there are guys that have come and gone. And there are guys that we're going to see come up on this ranking series that we haven't seen yet. You know, we, we, we've seen our, uh, our Batistas and John Cena's who have these long careers and they're in and out of main events and, and they're, they're, you know, they, they've got a prominent position, but they don't have the credibility that Andre held for so long. There are guys we haven't seen yet who maybe had more main event matches or maybe had more five-star main event matches, in-ring action matches, but I don't think there are many that can rival Andre's image and story that ties into these six manias. I, I think Andre should be higher up the rankings. I, I Top 10, at least, if, if not top five. I agree completely. Andre could do more with a smirk, a furrowed brow, um, just his emoting. I know Shawn Michaels is the king of emoting and he's Mr. WrestleMania, but listen, Andre, he's put, Andre's big enough to play to the back without having to be a, a clown. And he does, he does so much with just, it's, he's, so, he's such an, for a guy who's Andre the Giant, who's probably one of the biggest names ever, he's so underrated in terms of mm. what he meant, what he means, and what he did in a ring. From standing on the apron in a tag match and and being the focus focal point, there's big dudes beating the shit out of each other, and my eye goes to Andre in the corner and mm -hmm. showing hurt, showing emotion, like showing betrayal, and and it's like it's sad that he never did like you're saying, like he never closed the circle with Hogan, and that would have been the true great way for him to have a way to finally be like Hogan made it up to him a little bit somehow and. That would have been truly the great way to have a WrestleMania moment and have it end with Andre. But the way it ended and the way I watched this uh, as a as an arc is beautiful. And uh, but, I loved it, man. What a great run. <laughs> it's awesome. It is. It's great. And, and so there it is. Both Rock. I mean, Rock has already said it. He sees Andre as one. Um, I, I've said I, I think Andre is, is uh, if not top five, definitely top ten. I think he's been under. We both think he's been underrated here. What do you guys think? We know there's a lot of big names to come, but I think we've given our argument as to why Andre should be higher. Uh, at, at, at one thing I will say, he definitely shouldn't be lower. So, um, but yeah, that, that's where we stand. We, uh, we hope you've enjoyed this, this segment of, of this journey and we encourage you to keep listening. And Rocco, where else can people catch you if, uh, if they want to hear more of your stuff? Uh, North South Connection. You can find me on the uh, Cronoso Monthly, and you can also find me at uh, Chain to the Dead, which is my band. If you look at the thing underneath my jaw, uh, iTunes, all that stuff. If you like heavy metal music or um, songs about horror movies and wrestling, absolutely. And I'm I'm on Cronoso as well, so we'd love you to join us there. And um, I also do uh, through the Looking Glass, which we've got our new episode just about to drop, and it is. A WrestleMania episode as well. I'm not going to spoil it beyond that, but but thanks for joining us, guys. We appreciate it. Um, enjoy the rest of the series. On behalf of Rocco, I'm Dave Hall, and uh, we'll catch you next time. No So Countdown, greatest WrestleMania performers. I am Keithy Langston. I'm here with my buddy Scott Shiflett. How are you, Shippy? Ah, uh, Keithy, I'm glad to be doing back doing one of these again with you. They're so much fun to do. Um, thank you, No So, for having us back. You know, I guess yeah. I guess we passed our initiation with uh, the war game. So I'm glad to be back talking about WrestleMania. Absolutely. And we are talking about, in my humble opinion, Mr. WrestleMania. And that of course is number 14, Kurt Angle, Kirk Angel. What are your initial thoughts on Kirk Angel? And if I can ask you, Shifty, what is your favorite mania memory of him? Okay. Um, well, first off, 14, way too low for Kurt Angle. 
Now it's um, I'm gonna have to see. I'm gonna have to watch the other videos to see what the uh, what it is for why he's not even in the top ten. Mm-hmm. I would have him in the top five personally, um, just for his three match stretch from 19 to 21. The top moment for me is probably like surprisingly. The, I know I didn't speak about it, but the Rousey and Triple H and Stephanie match. Yep. I think that's almost as perfect as a match you can have with someone who's not a full time wrestler and stuff, mm-hmm. and also someone who it was their first wrestling match with Ronda. So. Yep. Just amazing match, you know, even though the year before, a couple years before they had looked like it was going to be The Rock, but you know, he only shows up when he wants. But I just that match, I just remember being blown away by that, how good that match was. I went back and watched a couple of these matches for this, and mm-hmm. um, the Shawn Michaels match, surprisingly, I'd never seen before, which yeah. is, is a, I guess that's a blight on me being a wrestling fan. I, my apologies, but that match is amazing. I'm a little shocked it's only 4.75 here. I would have it as a, the complete five stars, sure. Um, of course, Meltzer, you know. Yeah, it's Meltzer, but, uh, you and, know. But whatever. But no, it was amazing. The uh, the Eddie Guerrero match was also, like, I rewatched that. Sure. And I'm not the biggest Eddie fan, but, like, I really thought that was still, like, they just brought out the best in each other. So what, what's your favorite angle moment? I said mine. I, I mean, I, I'm i kind of with you. I have several. I mean, I love Kurt Angle. I mean, I loved him from his beginning all the way up through the end and when he was the ECW wrestling machine and then even he probably got me to watch more TNA than I would care to admit a lot of people in my opinion he was the guy that made TNA actually TNA you know and and then when he came back like you had mentioned the Ronda Rousey Triple H Stephanie McMahon match I mean yeah Meltzer giving it 4.25 stars absolutely I mean that's not high in my opinion. Like, I think that's very valid, you know, especially considering what was, we got a returning Kurt Angle. We got Ronda Rousey in her first match and, you know, Stephanie dragging Stephanie along to something. So great. Uh, however, I will say I, I have to go back to like WrestleMania 16 and just the, or WrestleMania 2000, if you will. And just like the, the complete uh, bullshittery that came around with what, how he lost both, championships the euro continental championship and then i can't carrying brock lesnar after brock lesnar boofed on the freaking shooting star press to the finale there i mean it's just everything kurt angle did it's it's going back and re-watching his stuff it's amazing that this guy transitioned as well as he did into being like just unbelievable i mean the greatest amateur wrestler of all time, probably going transitioning into one of the greatest professional wrestlers of all time is just unbelievable. And then forget about the fact that he is just personality personified. Uh, here's what gets me the 16, uh, sorry, WrestleMania 2000. Yeah. Um, like that Euro Euro continental thing that felt really felt like watching that was like the future of WWF at the time. You had sure. like both Chris's yeah. and, and Kurt, and it's like, wow. And, like, he loses both titles without even taking a pin. Like, Jericho and Benoit just pin each other. So that shows how much they still care about him, where he's not taking a pinfall right there. And going back to the Lesnar match, when he, you know, when you said he boofed up the student star press, which looks worse as I get older. That's how I, I know I'm getting more empathy, <laughs> is, like, right. when I first saw it, I was like, oh, you know, it's not too bad. Now I watch I'm like, oh, my God, how is he walking after that? <laughs> but Kurt does the smart thing, and he pins him. To buy yeah. Brock some time right. to then like be able to get up and get the F5, which when you see Brock there, he's in La La Land. He has oh, no idea yeah. where he has like, no idea who he is. Yeah. It's it's insane. Um yeah. now they would probably call it, but like the Eddie match is just like amazing storytelling from the start. They like start off with like chain wrestling, which we sort of see the next year with Sean because Sean yeah. also does like some amateur wrestling on him at the start before they start hitting the, the cool stuff. But uh, the Sean match shows how ferocious Kurt could be. He angle slammed Sean into the uh, the ring post, which looked gnarly and yeah. worked his back most of the match. And I, I you know, I messaged you this uh, t- today, actually. The grapevine ankle lock is amazing. You know, Absolutely. like, like, you know, to steal something from WWE 2K, that's like your super finisher when you have yep. all three, when he locks that grapevine on. Because yep. Sean even tries to get away from that ankle lock, and Kurt, like, it's just an amazing finishing stretch. Go out of your way to watch it. You know, the Orton and Mysterio match, like, see, I, I it blows my mind that that's using only, Eddie. Like, it's only, it blows my mind that it's near, it's only nine minutes long. Yeah. It's so weird. Like, how do you only give those, how do you only give those three guys nine minutes? I mean, you know, if that was today, that would be a 27 minute. Yeah. I mean, that would just be incredible. And, 
It's so weird. It's such a it's a bizarre. You're right. It's a it's a total Eddie. Like we're trying to give Ray the Eddie's in hell. Uh, like yeah. You know, and the less said about the Corbin match, the better. Like, you know, we've had we've, we've seen the past couple of years, on one hand, the correct way how to handle a legend was Sting's retirement, AEW. Then you see, on the other hand, how not to handle someone's retirement and final match with this. It's just embarrassing. You know, Baron Corbin is someone they've tried to push for years, which, you know, with Triple H taking over now, he's an NXT. So it shows yeah. what we think of him. Like, he, yeah. I, I've just never gotten him. Like, they've tried, they've just tried, but less said about that the better and it's only six minutes it felt like three minutes when i watched it but it's it's bad but i would put any 19 through 21 that three match stretch i would put that against anyone and it stands up i mean it shows it's one it's his one two three right and maybe he is hurt because he left for tna and was gone for so long when he was known as like the wrestling machine in in your words carrying tna you know he had some great matches with styles he even made me care about Abyss. Uh, so yeah, but in the main event mafia, but he's just it's just amazing. And it shows like look at all these matches. Um, three of them are for the world title, the one for the Eurocontinental title, mm-hmm. you know, the singles match with Benoit, which is pretty good at 17. Yeah. Um, 18, which originally was supposed to be him and Sting, but they didn't come to a deal with Sting, so that's why he got thrown in with the Kane match. And it's Kane, what do you expect? And it just right. feels like he's not ever really wasted at Mania. And even going back to like the Kane match, Kane was still kind of hot at this point, you know, and he was kind of or heating back up again. So I don't hate I don't hate that as much. It's just it is kind of a filler match, which which kind of stinks for Kurt Angle. But yeah, I mean the Eddie Guerrero match where Eddie they do the ankle lock and the boot comes off. I mean that's just a great that's a classic way to end. Like especially since it's. You know, Eddie's kind of Eddie's whole gimmick in the WWE was the lie, cheat, and steal. So it kind of made it, it made it great. The Shawn Michaels match, it's it's the it was the match of the year. It was the best match on the card. It might be one of the greatest WrestleMania matches of all time. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll be interested to see. I agree. Where, where it ends up ranking, uh, on it's the, definitely uh, top top five to top ten. Like. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I do want to go back and talk. You had mentioned about the Baron Corbin. Uh, I do want to go back and talk about how on this listing here. We had number 24 was Kevin Owens. And during that discussion, they were talking about Owens' match against against Austin and how that was just a an incredible match. You knew Austin was going to win, but he put over Kevin Owens for taking that kind of a beating. And I almost feel like they should have done that with Baron Corbin, uh, where even if it's going to be Kurt Angle's farewell match, Give it time. Let it kind of just develop into almost what Austin and Owens was, where it was just like a a total spot fest where like Kurt can shine in his farewell performance. Baron Corbin can take a beating of a lifetime. Maybe you have him pull out some kind of, you know, trickery at the end where he beats Kurt and that's it. I can see why it's considered a dud by most standards. Um, It's just, it is a shame that that's the last match that we have of Kurt, of Kurt Angle. Uh, and, you know, he's doing it to try to put over Baron Corbin, who really, I think Baron Corbin could have done something better with him. I don't hate Baron Corbin. That's the whole thing. It's just he doesn't have the best character development around him. And to put him with somebody who was, like I said, I said it before and I'll say it again, character personified. I mean, Kurt Angle is just, I even I was just driving the other day and then on my uh, Spotify mix, his theme song comes up and I'm sitting there <laughs> driving in the car and I'm just like the three eyes, intensity, integrity, intelligence. Like it's just everything about the guy was just fantastic. And I do say he's re- he's Mr. WrestleMania of the nine matches. Uh, is it nine, nine matches that he had? I mean, he's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine. Yeah, nine matches. You can even say that take out the Baron Corbin. All of them are great, you know. I don't hate the Kane match, and I love the Eurocontinental match. I know it's got – the star ranking is real low for Meltzer. I think Chad's got it at three and a half. I would go with that. Uh, I would give it a three and a half if that's Yeah, I mean, I'm in the middle for that, yeah. three and a quarter, three and a half, but I feel that's right. I just – the Baron Corbin thing with me, like I know we're harping on it, but that's like that's been his last match. He said he can't go. You yeah. could have him – like we see him miss that moonsault versus Sean. Yeah. Just haven't missed the moonsault, then like Corbin hits him at the end of days and it's over. Right. Like, that's it. Exactly. But give them like 10, 15 minutes to let him showcase all the things that made him great. You know, yeah. the grapevine ankle lock, or just even just 
hitting him with the Olympic slam four times, you know, and just, it, it could have been something so much better, but I felt like at that point it was an afterthought and it was, it was an afterthought in that mania, which stinks, you know, that's a good, that's a great mania. But uh, yeah, I mean, I think for other kind of extra things, he was inducted in the hall of fame for WrestleMania 33. Uh, not much else. I mean, really, I think only maybe like one or two maybe back backstage vignettes during that kind of run. Well, um, then he was the Raw GM uh, yeah, leading sure. up to the Corbin. That's how he got involved with the Rousey and Triple H match, which yeah. I thought was built beautifully. And sure. Triple H and him always, I thought, had pretty good chemistry, even going back to the, you know, the love triangle that him and Steph yeah. had uh, mm-hmm. with SummerSlam, I want to say 2000. So. Yeah. You know, just seeing all that and, you know, Stephanie being vindictive in the lead up to it and, you know, seeing Ronda Rousey. I remember people were like, why isn't this like, why is this later in the show? Why is this in the middle of the show? And it was because so it could be in newspapers the next day and like be on the 11 o'clock news, which it was. So like that's someone they trusted with that who wasn't even a full time wrestler for them. And it was a hell of a match. Let me ask you this. Do you think the main event of WrestleMania 17 should have been him in Austin instead of the Rock in Austin? No, it, it, Rock in Austin had to be Rock Austin. Yeah, it had to be Rock. Are you Austin. Sure about that? Yeah, you sure about that? I yeah, I am. I know. I know you're not the biggest Rock fan. Well, but one of the things that always bummed me out was just how hot Kurt was in that early that that title run, and then he kind of like jobbing at No Way Out to the Rock in February, and I'm like, that kind of sucks. And then. The match between Rock and Austin's great, but the build was kind of like it could have been the same build. Like I feel like the Rock didn't do anything different other than just be there. Whereas Kurt could have done, they could have done some screwy shit with Kurt, and it would have been I think awesome. And I think Kurt not. I mean, we saw throughout the rest of two thousand and one, Austin and Rock. I mean, Austin and Angle had a good run, you know. Yeah, that, that's what I was gonna say. Is if they can extend the invasion out to eighteen and have yeah. Austin versus Angle be, yeah. you know, that ends the that ends the invasion with like, yep. which you can say what you want about Stone Cold being the leader of the Alliance, but if you have like eighteen being winner take all match Angle versus Austin or like yep. whoever wins the most matches that night on WCW, w, I mean Alliance WWS side, and it's like four four going into the last match. Sure. And you just have a banger with with those two, and I think that would push him up higher <laughs> than fourteen. I think, I think like, right? Yeah, I think well, he I should mean, be at least top ten because I would. I want to see. I think maybe the only one who could touch uh, Angle for having three great matches in a row at Mania is Sean. But I'm. Yeah. I would have to go back and look. But like, and Sean's known as Mister WrestleMania. Like you know, that was right. the whole nickname when they were going in that build to that match. So. And- and I think a lot of that with Sean and is because the guy was the guy had his working boots on three different times in his career. You know, he he had his working boots when he was in the when he was on the Rockers. He had his working boots when he was, you know, the the first iteration of Shawn Michaels. And then when he comes back after the injury, I mean, the guy is unbelievable. But yeah, if I'm going to say there's a Mr. WrestleMania Jr., I'm going to say it's Kurt Angle. I don't think. Any of the other guys that are above him on this list, 13 to 1, with the exception of maybe Shawn Michaels. That's my opinion. We all know what opinions are like. I apologize <laughs> to the rest of uh, you know, the North South Connection who are gonna be arguing this fact, but Kurt Angle, 14, way too low, in my opinion. Uh, I definitely agree. 14, he should I would say top five, even top seven. Maybe next year they'll have us on Keithy and we will boost the votes. <laughs> sure. Well, I mean, and that's that's kind of the thing is we talked a little bit about like the only thing that really hurts him is the Baron Corbin match. I mean, again, we we've talked about you could say the Kane match, but again, I don't hate it. It's just I think it's low. I think Meltzer ranks it way a lot lower than he should. Uh, and then I the, the Eurocontinental title match is way low, way low for my opinion. I thought that was a great match. Like you said, it was the future of the company with Jericho and then he who shall not be named. I mean, it was just. Seriously, like those are the those are the three guys that they were looking at post Attitude Era, really. You know, and that though, and and honestly, did the three of them not carry the company post? Well, during the Attitude, the end of the Attitude Era into the post Attitude Era. I mean, Angle kind of transitioned between that Attitude Era to the uh, aggr- ruthless aggression. I mean, he's the friggin' guy that started the ruthless aggression with friggin' John Cena. So, and you look know. at nineteen through twenty one. 
head of SmackDown, the world yeah. champion for SmackDown, the yeah. lead, like the, the, the number one challenger for the SmackDown yep. title. Yep. When I think of SmackDown, I don't think of Edge like people like to say, no. like maybe it was later 2000, but those first years of SmackDown, it's Kurt Angle. It's Kurt Angle, Kurt Angle, Kurt Angle, and he was supposed to be the anchor for ECWE. So, I mean, yeah. I, think in, I think he could have been, had he been healthy and not having issues and leaving and going to TNA, ECW, WWE might have actually taken off and been something, you know? Yeah. So, that's, that's a crazy what if, like, just yeah. all of it. Um, I, I think that's, we. I mean, we have our final takeaway. I think he's just, he's way too low. We, we, we I think you and I are both putting him in the top five. Uh, I agree with you completely on that wholeheartedly. So we'll see. We'll see where uh, maybe, yeah, maybe we can argue. We, we should come in and argue on some of the other ones. Like, no, listen, I object, you know. <laughs> but, uh, all right, with that being said, Scotty, uh, you have any uh, thing you want to plug? Uh, yeah, I'm on uh, Linking Up Lucha here on the No So Feed. Drops every other Sunday. We're at the end yeah. of season one. Um, looking forward to that. And I'm on YouTube Roulette on the PTPN feed. Um, but, yeah, what about you, Keithy? I know <laughs> you, you know? do, buddy. I I'm on I'm a little I'm, I'm I'm a little bit of everything. No, you can always hear every every other Friday a la carte with Keithy on the North South Connection Podcast Network. Uh, you can hear me every week uh, on your other podcast, any other podcast feed you look at with uh, GFA Live with Petey Winson, and uh, I pop up all over the place. The uh, Place to Be Nation, um, it, uh, what's a pop experience with the uh, pop video jukebox song of the day. I'm usually on there at least once a week, so check it out. And that I think will do it. So for uh, Shifty Shift, this is Keithy Keith. We'll talk to you later.